Hello, and welcome to Backseat Gamer. I'll be your roundabout. I'm your host, Michael Riley, and with me is Dane Forgione. Yo. The words will make you out and out. Uh, what? It's the words. I might have been I might have been reading an article about yes before we started today. About the Yes Network. Yeah, sure. Which is where he ate these games on. Yes. What did this fine article say about Yes? Yeah, it was just the history of the history of the the band and shit like that. Hey y'all, remember when the Buggles were part of Yes for a hot minute? Yeah, that's the part specifically I was referring to. That I was reading. Yes, as a matter of fact, the Buggles were as a part of Yes for a while. And I believe one of them actually came back. Trevor Horn. Yeah. That's it. He, mm. uh... So, okay, so it, the, the Buggles had just done Video Kill the Radio Star in England. Um, and were yeah. approached by... The because John is John Anderson had just left, yes, and they were approached by uh, well, they, I think they got the same manager as the band. Ooh, that's creepy. And then uh, they were why, offering, why did we see that? That's disgusting, that's weird. They were offering songs to yes, and they instead were like, hey, why don't you just join us? <laughs> okay. So yeah, the Buggles became part of Yes, and mm -hmm. people in the UK were more often than not not happy about that. <laughs> they well, weren't. They weren't fans. One of the tours that they did um, to promote the album Drama. Drama is the album. Yes, it came out I believe in nineteen eighty. Yeah, people bought tickets. Thinking that John Anderson and Rick Wakeman were going to be there, yeah, was like, that the was the fuck? issue. Is that, these guys? that was the issue is that Yes never publicized that John Anderson and uh, the keyboardist I forget his name had left the band. Rick Wakeman. That's it. Yeah, never publicized that they had left the band. So it was kind of just within their circle that that knew that John and Rick had gone. So when people bought the tickets and ended up seeing basically the Buggles, and there was only two actual members of the band, the Buggles, so uh, Trevor Horn and the other guy, which I don't, I, I don't remember his name. Jeff Downs. That's it. Jeffrey Downs, rather. Yeah. So yeah, they they saw them and they were like, "What the hell is this?" Now they did they, the they did great this? they did great in the U.S. They were selling out shows left and right here. It's true. That nobody gave a shit really, who was at the uh, front of Yes at that point. And really, the album drama wasn't that bad of an album. There hasn't really been, I would say, a, a bad Yes album. There's been Yes albums that were made that had a lot of problems, like behind the scenes. But to say that they were bad, um, I don't, um, I don't, I wouldn't call them bad necessarily. Wasn't the underwhelming? Maybe, I feel like but there was a bad. lot of. There was a lot of drama behind the scenes for the Tormato album. Yeah, that was that was around the time that John Anderson left. Yes. Mm hmm. So, Inter interesting that they would call the album drama that came after that, after experiencing all mm -hmm. that drama. So, super magma hot take coming right now. Okay. Uh, the album Big Generator is a good album. I don't care what anybody says. I did would not have initially agreed with you, but after having gone back and listened to it, yes, I, I agree. Yes, it is actually in fact. Yeah. <laughs> it is actually not that bad of an album. Rhythm of Love is a really good song. It's underrated. It's almost like love. Yep. Yeah, Rhythm of Love is a really good song. Love Will Find a Way isn't that bad either. Um, I mean, a lot of people say that it's quote unquote overproduced. And well, that's the thing is that 
it had a lot of producers on it, and there was a reason for that. It's because Trevor Horn left like midway through the recording. He was the producer. Mm -hmm. He was the one who produced 90215, which, or 90125, I should say, which is the one that gave Yes their biggest hit ever. Yeah. Before TikToks became the reason why Roundabout got so big. But You know, I'm looking at the current lineup of Yes. Uh huh. And Jeffrey Downs apparently is back, has been back with the band since 2011. Well, there you go. That's interesting. And really, the only the only link um, between the early days of Yes and Now is Steve Howe, because literally uh, everybody else has either passed away or just left. Um, Alan White passed away like very recently. I know. Yeah. That. And Chris Squire passed away as well. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, there you have it. The Buggles were once a part of Yes. And actually one of them provided Yes with their biggest hit later on. Uh, owner of a Lonely Heart. Owner of a Lonely Heart, yes, indeedy. 90125, that whole fucking album... The, the getting it, it getting put together was is kind of a hell of a story in and of itself, because after drama and everybody had kind of gone their separate ways a little bit. Um, Tony K and a couple of the other guys from Yes recruited. Uh, oh no, Tony K was recruited. No, Tony Rabbit was the one who was recruited. Trevor Raymond. Uh, Ray, Trevor Rabin, from that's the it. Fine, from the fine country of South Africa. Yeah, uh, he was recruited to start working on some music with Tony K and them. And they were going to call their the band Cinema. Yes. Um, and there wasn't was... the whole... I, so, not that I want to interrupt you, but wasn't the whole... It was like a schism, because... There was Anderson, Buford, Wakeman, and Howe was a band. That was after. That was that was right after Big Generator. Hmm. So what what I'm what I'm talking about was uh, we're talking like 1982 ish at this point. Um, they had they had Tony K and, and Trevor Rabin and uh, they were they were working on Cinema. And they brought Trevor Horn in to do some lead vocals. And Trevor Horn was like, well, how about I just produce your album instead? So that's what he ended up doing. And uh, I believe Trevor and... Uh, Trevor and somebody else were splitting lead singer vocals uh, duties on that. And then somebody from Arista Records showed John Anderson the tracks they were doing for Cinema... And John was like, tell you what, I'll come on board and we'll just lay down some vocals for this. I'll just lay down some vocals for this. So I was like, okay. Yeah, you know, it, it's – I've heard a few versions of the story and how he came back. Like literally one version is that I he apparently was like, oh, so what are you guys up to? Like what, what kind of music are you doing? And they showed him the music and he was like, I, I, I want to be – I want to come back and, and be in this album. Like – Basically, so yeah. there you go. And it was still called Cinema, even with John Anderson on it, until somebody from the record label suggested that they just change the name to Yes, because you had three of the four original members. Uh, you might as well call it Yes. And it definitely was a, it's a departure from their sound, because they were more of a progressive rock band, but this was a... 90125 well, is decidedly a pop rock album. If you, um, if you watch their concerts from around that era... They it looks like the '80s grew up on them. Yeah, uh, specifically the I think believe their concert video, the concert movie uh, 9021 Live. Yep, that would be the one. Yeah, that's the one that they spent like a million dollars doing special effects for. It's crazy. A million dollars. But yeah, and then uh, Tony K was like, uh, not Tony K. Trevor Rabin was just like, I don't know about this, guys. I don't. Oops. That was a fuck up. Can I get back up? Oh yeah, I can. Good. Um, 
Trevor uh, Trevor Evans was originally like, I don't know about this. I came to do a new band, and I don't want to be a part of an established band with expectations and things like that. You know, uh, I don't know how they convinced him to to, to do it, but uh, there you go. And then nine zero one two five happened, mm -hmm. and it was their biggest fucking hit, their biggest record ever. I was gonna say triple platinum in the US. When they when they were put into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, didn't he get in as part of it? I, I believe so. There was a lot of members of Yes. <laughs> There's at least ten members. So I, I would think the, that all of them got in at they, some point, probably. It, let's see who got in. It was John Anderson, Bill Buford, Steve yes. Howe, Tony Kay, yep. Trevor Rabin. So yep. there you go. There you go. Chris Squire, Whip Raven, and Alan White. So you know what, Trevor? If you're if you are in fact listening to this, which I sincerely yeah, doubt. Sincerely doubt, yeah. You It's a you, good thing you, you stuck created, around. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say it's a good thing that you didn't leave because now you're in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah. And you play on literally the biggest hit. That's right. And you had a band called Rabbit. Yeah, that's true. He did. Oh, yes, South Africa. Its two biggest musicians are Dave Matthews and Trevor Rabbit. Yep. Yeah, and then Big Generator came around, and Horn was producer for most of it, and then he had some disagreements with the band and left. So Hard Rab war, war. Yep, and Rabin actually stepped in and produced the rest of the album, and it was still good. Big Generator is mm -hmm. still a good album, even despite all that. There's some great songs on it. John Anderson's voice is still really solid and, and then John Anderson about the end of 88 he was like eh I want to do more prog rock so he went off to form a band with Rick F Wakefield and a couple of other people uh, Buford and all them and they had a that was Anderson, project. Buford, Wakefield and Howe that's, that's right and they were yes without being yes basically and so then, me and Mike are going to start the yes podcast that's basically what this is at this moment because Obviously, we're playing Doom 3. We're expecting this to be the last session of Doom 3. So this, if this episode isn't the last one, the next one will be. Um, even if we, at this point, even if we don't finish it, because I, I really kind of just want to take a break from Doom. Um, I, you know, I, I had originally like... said I originally had said that Quake was going to be next, but I'm I'm considering a couple of other possibilities. We might step okay. away from first person shooters. We're what, already um, we're already we playing a first person shooter at the moment as our other long play and I'm considering something else. I was considering maybe doing some Mario 64 hacks of some varieties. I've seen some pretty awesome looking ones. You know, I remember when you did like Chaotic Mario or whatever that one was. My, uh, my Chaos Edition. It won't be that one. Yeah. But I've seen some really awesome looking like almost HD remasters. There, there was one that somebody did where they took the Super Mario Brothers Super Show cartoon and they just they turned it into a full blown game. You know, they had the voice Captain Lou Albano's voice was there. That's cool. And uh, yeah, but uh, there's specifically one I watched a video of the other night that um, it's basically it looks they've updated everything for HD. It looks beautiful, and they've included like. You can do some of the moves and stuff that you could do in Super Mario Odyssey. So that's an interesting. Yeah. You can turn into a big fat elephant. You can you can put your hat on animals in Mario 64 and control them, which and you can throw your hat and collect coins that way and there's no live system, so one ups don't really mean anything, but Oh, I was I was thinking of uh, Super Mario Wonder, never mind. Yeah. Super Mario Odyssey was yeah. Cappy. Yeah, Odyssey was the 3D one. Mario Wonder is like 2.5D, which I've actually mm -hmm. not yet played Wonder. I need to it, see if I need to... Well, first of all, I need to re-up my Nintendo subscription because I think it's lapsed. And then I need to make sure my uh, Elgato still works because so I still have one. It's sitting Elgato. here. If it still works, I could probably play some Switch Super Mario games. Wonder... Wasn't 
too bad. I mean, sometimes when you've played one Mario game, you've played them all. It's true. So, where was I at in the in the yes story? Uh, we were big generator, right? We were, we were yeah, talking about we were, John Anderson. We, we, we just, were just getting into just the left. Schism. Yeah, and they split off and formed Yes without being called Yes. Anderson, mm -hmm. Wakefield, Buford, and whatever. And Shem. And, and Shemp, yeah. So, you have Yes West, which is ba the, the, the pop rock Yes based out of Los Angeles. And then you have Real Yes, which is be not even being called Yes. And they're starting to write songs for their s separate projects. Uh, the the John Anderson Supergroup put out a an album, and it was really good. And then they started writing f songs for follow up, and yes, we're writing songs for follow up. And the record label was like, "Well, these don't sound great the, for the yes songs. Why don't we look for outside sources to write these songs?" So they ended up collaborating with with the the members of AWBH and ended up that's how Union came about the 1991 Yes album there are about mm -hmm. nine musicians on that record and it's basically AWBH and the pop rock version of Yes collaborating mm -hmm. together to make basically a, a, a dual album like a split album almost that was a split album before split albums were even a thing but it was all called Yes, because literally everybody in there was a member of Yes at one point. So, well, What's very strange is apparently, according to the Wikipedia article, most of the band have negative opinions on the album. Which is, uh, a, which is a weird thing, because Union actually also did great. <laughs> it was also well, you know. a good album. <laughs> Strangely, <laughs> see, this is what I'm saying. It's like, yes, they they had some problems behind the scenes in the in the 80s and early 90s, but their their output was fantastic. Like you could you you can't really argue that they had a bad album in that period. It's crazy it's to think that all the all the bullshit that they had to go through just to get those albums made. Like 90125 was probably the least amount of drama to get made. And I think uh, I think they actually won a Grammy for oh, they, uh, best yeah. instrumental it, song on uh, on 90125 Cinema the band, the song named after the the original band name we, before they renamed it. Oh to my yes. God, we won a Grammy! Yep, and they were nominated for a couple other ones as well. Um, I think mm -hmm. they won a Grammy for something off a of Union as well. No, Cinema was their only Grammy win apparently. Okay. But yeah, that's uh, it's it's very interesting to think about the all that all that prog rock they did and the pop rock is what got them the most uh, recognition. You know, a lot of uh, a lot of these prog rock bands stick to their guns and they don't go commercial, right? And you know, like King Crimson, for example, they had several opportunities to quote unquote go commercial, and they were like, "No, no, we're we're gonna keep doing what we're doing." Right. And while it didn't get them um, the stardom that they were no doubt looking for, uh, a lot of people at least from in the circles that I've heard, respect the fact that they stuck to their guns and were like, nope, we are not selling out. We will uh, keep doing what we're doing. Thank you. So there you go. Brrrr. Brrrr. It's kind of like, well, it's like the opposite. It's like the opposite of the wild cherry story. They were like, we let's. They were like, play that funky music. That was a hit, and the record label was like, yeah, do songs exactly like that. <laughs> play that funky music. Yeah, and Rick Parisi was just like, okay, 
So they did Baby Don't You Know, and it sounded exactly like fucking Play That Funky Music. And wouldn't you know it, it didn't do shit for him. <laughs> well, there was a, it was a, I was watching like one of the VH1 behind the music things that was talking about Wild Cherry. Yeah. And I think it might have been Rob Parisi who was like, by the time we did our like third or fourth album, the only people buying it were our parents. Yeah. I mean, it's nice to have support, but at the same time. That's not exactly going to get you anywhere in life. <laughs> not no. that not that very minimum support. Yes, your parents believe in you, but nobody else does. That's the problem. <laughs> Where? Even grandma thinks you suck. Have you, uh, side note, have you ever heard the jazz version of Play That Funky Music that uh, Rob Parisi did for, uh, like, it's a few years ago, he did a like a jazz album that had that on it? It's instrumental, no. so there's no actual singing on it. I, I can't say I have. He just plays the the guitar, plays the vocal parts, but it's, it's mm. oddly weird. It's like play that. Mike, was, Mike play, listened to it and was like, "Does anybody else have a boner right now?" No, it was it was like, to to quote a a, a line from uh, Todd in the Shadows, it was. Play that jazzy Muzak white boy. Mm hmm. And it really, I agree. It kind of is. <laughs> you, you don't say. Bam, 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 out, and out. How nice of Wild Cherry, by the way, to put their origin story in their biggest hit. It was a funky crocodile. I did a whole line of crack. No, I'm just kidding. Whoa. Vanilla ice covered our song. And I what sued, a douchebag. And I sued him out the ass. <laughs> oh, yes, I sued him. I sued him. I really, he, really sued he got him. A, he got, he got $500,000 for that lawsuit. So, Which is fine because uh, by his own admittance, he hadn't saved his money very well from... Uh, from uh, his original music outing. Well, imagine that. You know, it, was the, it was the 70s. What do you want? <laughs> That's well, how you're going to knock me off my goddamn feet. No shit. But yeah, it was the 70s. Oh, this is Japan. It was the 70s. Now it's, now it's no longer the 70s. Yeah. Yeah, people are smarter about their money. No, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> People still buy every, those. People still buy those stupid glasses that are shaped like the year every New Year's Eve, even people, though even though that has twenty year, been twenty years since that has actually worked as a pair of glasses. People, people buy Tesla trucks and they think it's cool. Yeah, cyber truck, and then they close their finger in the fucking trunk and it cuts their finger off, and they wonder why did I listen to Elon Musk? Dude, mate, wants you to pay eight dollars just to tweet. Yesterday, I I sent a video of this in the Facebook chat. I saw one of these fucking monstrosities in the parking lot of a Barnes and Noble that's near my place of work. Oh God! And it's like I, I gotta take a good long look at this thing. Yeah, thing. It looked like a refrigerator on wheels. It's a low poly GMZ Denali. GMC Denali is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like the GMC is like PS4 era graphics, and then the Cybertruck is like N64. <laughs> Basically. It's really, I don't, yeah, it's gross looking. I don't like it. It's. Yeah. The N64 graphics barely held up in 1997, I'll be honest. Let alone 2025. <laughs> exactly. Let alone 34 fucking years later. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yep. Well, whatever's going on over there, you you do you, Bubba. Uh-oh. Oh! 
Oh, well, pretty sure that guy's dead. Probably. Oh well. You should probably you should probably squeegee that off. It's not coming. Oh out. damn it! It's on the outside. Yep. <laughs> where's the hey, where's the other the... where's where's Mo Lowry and Curly tonight? What what's going on? I don't know. That's a good question. Boop beep boop beep boop beep beep. Oh. I'm playing in a rock and roll band. <laughs> now it's stuck in my fucking head. We didn't die like Leonard Skinner. Oof. Well, two of them anyway. I was shitting and farting <laughs> every and pooping on a and pooping on a cowboy. <laughs> and just when I lost And it. just when it hit me, somebody <laughs> turned around and shouted, Nine eleven was it inside job. <laughs> we had that person take it away because he was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh I think Rob Parisi needs to go Parisi home. Parisi has to go home now. <laughs> Actually it's not even Rob Parisi that needs to go home. The dude that shouted it needs to go home. Rob's just the messenger. We don't well, he, <laughs> he's just telling us what he heard. <laughs> somebody turned around and shouted, Obama is a reptile. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Whoever this person is that is shouting at Rob Parisi. Can we ban him from all future Wild Cherry shows? Oh, those, those don't happen anymore anyway, so it's fine. <laughs> Rob, Rob Parisi's playing the guitar on stage. Rob! Rob! What's up, fan? Choose Dead Mortal 11! All right, somebody get security, please. <laughs> Can't you just say, play that funky music, white boy, like normal people? Like, like it says so in our song. Why well, you got to make a liar out of me? <laughs> Rob! Hey, Rob! <sighs> what do you want now? <laughs> oh, Baba fucked a poodle! Uh, oh, my God. I, I, I don't believe that that actually happened. <laughs> I, I sincerely I, doubt that I, that actually happened. Yeah, I, I doubt very... If anybody, if any president was going to fuck a poodle, it's probably Trump. I'll be honest. What? <laughs> maybe, maybe Biden. No. Maybe Biden. <laughs> I feel like I feel like Joe Biden would fuck Terrier. Yeah. <laughs> Those are the workhorse dogs. <laughs> That's right. That's what I was gonna say. Well, you know, That's... old Joe Biden, he likes he likes greyhounds. It's just American. It's just American to fuck a terrier. <laughs> that that's gonna be Joe Biden's 2024 campaign slogan. It's American, it's American to fuck a <laughs> mm. I felt the cough coming on, so that's why I had to pause. <laughs> Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Worms ate my brain. Yep. Well, that explains a lot. John F. Kennedy Jr. was like, hmm, Philippines Air, that seems trustworthy. <laughs> Whee! <laughs> Into the damn ocean where nobody could ever find him again. Ted Kennedy's like, you know what You know what would be really cool if I drove my fucking car off a bridge <laughs> and killed somebody in the process? Uh, I thought you were going to be like, you know what would be fucking cool if I just drank until my liver imploded? <laughs> I drank so much that my liver committed suicide. That's right. my, my liver was just like, I'm out. See ya. Slides out my butthole. Yeah. Mm, yeah, I'm going to shut down now. <laughs> my liver, my liver's next to my leg. <laughs> Here's the episode title. Oh, boy. <laughs> 
Well, I get a, where's my, uh, where's my bonus for, uh, <laughs> your bonus coming is up a, with the title. Name. Your bonus is a pat on the head. Oh, a word of encouragement. Well, pats on the head don't, pats on the head don't pay my bill. No, get me off of his head. No, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I'm a horse. <laughs> Pat and Lee Herman? What the fuck? Give me back my bike, Francis! <laughs> I jacked off in a theater once. <laughs> I'm a loner, Dottie, a rebel. <laughs> yeah, <I'm> a... <laughs> When I'm alone in a porn theater, I jack off. Listen, I don't jack off with my friends. If my, listen, if my if my companion was E.G. Daily, I would also jack off. Oof. Until she started doing suggesting... until she started doing the Tommy Pickles voice, and then I'm just like, no, this is weird. Are you suggesting that E.G. Daily is not an attractive woman? No, I'm suggesting she is. That's why she. Why would? Oh, why would you, about, why why would you jack off? Why would you jack off to an ugly woman? <laughs> well, well, I guess, I guess by my logic, if E.G. Daily was next to me, I would want to like, fuck her. Oh, rather than well, jack that's. Off. I guess that's fair. So you can I, see I was confusion, just right? yeah. Well, I was just considering the fact that maybe you know I I she's too good for me, and therefore I just pleasure myself instead. Because at least there, then I I'm for sure getting pleasure out of it. Well, I mean, <laughs> not with that attitude. If you're gonna put yourself down, <laughs> e. you're Daly right. Is gonna be you're like, right, Dane. I am not too good for E. G. Daly, the voice of Tommy Pickles on Rugrats. <laughs> Hey, you know what? You don't know. E.G. Daly could come up to you and go, a baby's gonna screw you. <laughs> Wait a minute. That didn't come out right. I think I killed Mike. Mike, are you alive? That's it. You can do the rest of this episode yourself. I'm leaving. Oh, well, I, I, I would, but I, I don't have. I, I can't. I can't. Yeah, you're I, the I one playing. I, I don't. I can't. I just can't do it, man. I just can't. Oh, I'm crying. Mm. Mm. You see, folks, for those of you who don't know the lore of oh, the story and history of all the. Games and fantastic nuttiness that happens on these shows. More often than not, when it's just me and Mike by ourselves, this sort of wackiness happens. And it's pure it's, gold. It's, I was gonna say it's called gold. <laughs> you, you saw where my my mind was headed. Then. Now, oh, now listen. Here as story. far as I'm concerned, I think E.G. Daly divorced her husband in the year 2000. So as far as we know, she's available. She's a, she's available. So oh, I mean, I wouldn't turn her down. I, 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 I'd listen, have to think about. I'd give it a second thought if she came up to I'm me just and did saying, that fucking like, voice. If you went up to her and was like, "I loved you in Camp Candy. Also, I want to do you." <laughs> You know, I always Dottie always gave me a boner, you know. Maybe maybe not that long. Dottie always <laughs> gave me a Dottie always gave me a boner. A boner. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's get all let's get all the foxy attractive older women in show business. Let's get like Cassandra Peterson and yeah. uh, Leah Ramini. Well, she's not that old. I'm just gonna, uh, I'm just gonna let that one sit. <laughs> I mean, what? 
I just <laughs> oh, she's not that old. She's just old enough. <laughs> well, okay. Well, let me put it to you this way. E.G. Daly is, I think, in her 60s, and Leah Romini is 53. Yeah. So, like, and they could both still um, get it. They, they can both they can both get that woo-woo wet, if you get my, catch my, my meaning. <laughs> I'm just saying, if Leah Romini came up to me and was like, hey, you want to make out? I, I don't think I yeah. would be like, Nah. I believe I believe we actually you've actually said that on a previous episode. <laughs> well, and it's still true. <laughs> I feel I feel like it bears repeating. Uh-huh. It's like you know, you you stop doing that Scientology thing, so obviously you're not insane. Correct. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where's my super shotgun? There it is. <sighs> oh, cutscene. Breasts. Crazy. See what's going on? There's so much. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. You got a big ass forehead. Whoever you are. I didn't make or it. Or is just. That's, that's what the breasts are supposed to distract from. Oh. That's the why fact that she has a six head. Yeah, that's why the scoot suit is skin tight. It's like, you're not going to notice my five head with the hip. You're not going to get up that far. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. My, my tremendous forehead is up here. You can use the Delta teleporter to return the artifact to help for good. I know this sounds crazy, but it's the only way. The important you know, the fact that this woman is still alive in what is essentially a fucking just apocalyptic murdering spree of yeah. monsters. Not only is it a lie, but she is seriously telling me here to go to hell. Like, actually, literally go to hell. Like, like <laughs> hey, what are you telling me to go to hell for? No, no, I mean listen, literally. Just Listen, go, listen no. we're, we're likely going to be the only two left standing after all this, so you might want to rethink your choice of words. <laughs> hey, you know, there's, there's also the, uh, the subject of... Uh, Repopulation. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I am just dripping with goo. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I feel I am like a I am like a fire hose that is that somebody is holding like the nozzle. <laughs> like all it takes is all it takes is one. So what you're saying is, if I let go of the end of my penis, it's just going to spray everywhere. <laughs> you, yes. <laughs> I I think that was that, the implication. Was, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm just. I put listen, out. A, I put I, out a fire. I, the, I put out a five alarm fire the other day in my with my jism. With my jism. my jism. Listen, I'm just saying. I, not only have I killed like several thousand monsters and zombies, I'm also extremely lonely. <laughs> uh, it's it's been a while since I've seen a woman. Yeah. So I like, saw I saw a spider. Oh yeah. I saw a giant spider chick with boobs, but that's not nearly the same thing. That was that was actually kind of strangely. It was a boner killer. Yeah. If you if you yeah, like you know when I see an actual woman that's not a spider. And... Like I would never fuck a spider unless her name is Gwen. I would not. I mean, maybe maybe Cheetah Rivera in Kiss of the Spider. Woman. Maybe. Yeah. But other than that, I don't know. It's a little, uh, a little out of my price range, a little out of my, uh, right. real range. house. Yeah. <sighs> you gotta shut down the research power. Yeah. Whatever that means. 
Um, probably got to climb up here. Oh, what? Are you singing the uh, 1992 Toad the Wet Sprocket hit, Walk on the Ocean? Yes. But see, in this version, they all have dysentery, so they're pooping so they're on, poop the on the ocean. Got it. Correct. So. You know, you just gotta, gotta be careful what you drink there. I poop on the ocean. I poop in the storm. My shit is like water. Ugh. My shit comes out like water. Like water. <laughs> Hello, governor. I always wanted to sound like Rita Ora. <laughs> Hello, I'm Rebel Wilson. Hello. Uh, used to be extremely doable, but now, I don't know. After some of the things she um, said. I'm over it. No. She's... She's I'm not. Attractive. No, I'm not saying she's not attractive. I'm just saying that like her mouth is overriding all that work. <laughs> like she said some questionable things. She's she most recently uh, accused Sasha Baron Cohen of being a dipshit on set of his movies. Which I mean, it's Sasha Baron Cohen. Of course, he's a dipshit. But... I was I was gonna say, is that really surprising that he was a dipshit on a movie set? But I, I, I'm talking like things like he, oh, he wanted like her to put her finger in his butthole and things like that. I mean, that's that's very gross and unsettling. But again, not off brand for him. This is fucking Borat we're talking about. Yeah. yeah, just the, Sasha some, of the, Cohen some of the things that Rebel... think of his prostate. It was disgusting. Yeah. And like, if true, yeah, that's that sucks. But it's just like, she has a very Karen attitude about her. And it puts me off. I mean, she ha kind of has the right to have that kind of attitude because there is... She, um... I feel like there was a story where a tabloid said blatantly false things about her and it almost ruined her career and she had to sue them basically out of existence to get the stories retracted uh yeah actually i believe that's still ongoing they're still trying to appeal it so and if, actually i think they did successfully and rebel wilson's got to pay back like half the money so ooh, right. yeah God, even even though they were blatantly wrong, they still yeah. That's and don't get me wrong. I'm not saying anything like Rebel Wilson's like wrong about anything she said. It's just like the way that she says it puts me off, and I I can't exactly put a finger on it. Much like she would not put a finger in Sasha Baron Cohen's pile. Correct. This wasn't meant to turn into a discussion of who would I bang. <laughs> <laughs> Lawrence Welk. Definitely. Holy shit, we are fucking a smoking now. <laughs> King Triton from the Little Mermaid. Definitely bang. Yeah, I, would, I, I would titty fuck him. Dude was like <laughs> 100 years old, but he was ripped. That's right. Like ripped like Jesus. Nigel Thornberry, absolutely. I would destroy I, I, fucking him. any anything voiced by Tim Curry is instantly a smash. Come on. Yeah. Know that as well as I do. Gonzo the puppet, no doubt about it. Well, I, yeah. would, I would put that. I, I would put that nose of things up in my ass. <laughs> you beat me to the joke. <laughs> uh, da 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 da. Wiener. Anyway. 
Desmond Tutu? Uh, he's dead. Um, eh, but they're not alive. Eh, would you like to uh, <laughs> snatch? Eh. <laughs> I mean, if he, if he if he made that noise while you were smashing, I probably would not. Eh, be eh, eh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Desmond, you do that too? Yeah, everybody does that. You know that? Oh, it's, it's very common. You thought you came up with it here on this show, but you know, as a matter of fact. Well, you came, you came up with it, right? Or something like that. Yeah. I, just, I can't take I just like I just, I just like to give you credit for things I did just because. <laughs> It's like, eh, it's whatever. Just because. Just it's, because. It's, it, it's not who invented it that matters. I, I feel like it's just that it's been invented. That's what matters. Well, I honestly don't like to take credit for things that I didn't do. And you're the one who came up with... <laughs> so. Well, I, I appreciate that. You're an honest man. Yep, you can't cheat an honest man. That's what they That's said. That's right. But you sure can, like, be dangling off the side of this box by your leg. Oh, my, yes. Anyway. <laughs> Warning. Automated turret guns online. Okay. What? What happens now? Uh, well, I'm assuming there's a code for this that I have to look up now. I'm, a, I'm, a sh I'm assuming, Miss Money Penny. I haven't had to look up Doom Three codes in a in a while. They're still in my history, though. Mm. Oh my, yes. I'm gonna go all the way to Resurrection of Evil. Resurrection of evil. Retracting bridge, so that must be this. Two, eight, one. Attention. Automated turret guns offline. Ha ha! Mm. Service bridge now operational. Well, there you go. I have done it. Hey! Stop! We're human! Well, I guess you're monsters. They shot at me first. When you shoot at me, I it don't matter. Help. No defense. No defense. That's right. Exactly. Access granted. Yay, plasma gun. About time I got the fucking plasma gun. <sighs> yep. Yep, a Rooney. <laughs> yep, a ding dong. Get absolutely baked. Whoa. Do they have do they have pot in the Doom universe? I would imagine. I mean, if you had to deal, whoa! Yeah, if you had to deal uh, with things like this, fucking thing, I would get high. I would, I would be, I would want to be high twenty four seven. Absolutely, like, I, I would want to rationalize. I'm not nearly high enough I, to deal with this. Shit. I was gonna say, I would want to rationalize what I'm saying. It must be the pot. It's got to be. I can't imagine what else it could possibly be. Rob Van Dam would. Fit in very well. Yo, oh, like, hey, I was, walking skeletons. I was, work, uh, I was just working out my arm legs, and I was I, this revenant came across me, and I don't, I got to lay off uh, the hash. It turned out it was just that boo. <laughs> I realized that when the revenant pointed up towards the sky, and then then he botched jumping off the ropes. Yeah. He fell through three tables covered in razor blades and fire. You know, I I, I figured out the revenant was actually taboo when he fucking stapled his nipples together or whatever. He Jesus did. Christ! <laughs> oh, no, he, didn't he like super glue? He super glued yeah. his wounds. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's absolutely. I mean. When especially in that fucking barbed wire match he had with Terry Funk, we ripped his fucking forearm open. And then super glued it shut in the middle of the match. I Sab feel like, Sabu uh, is a crazy uh, motherfucker. You don't say. 
Well, you, Jesus, you could have knocked me over with a feather with that fucking revelation. I actually went to a house show for a local wrestling federation. And Sabu was there. Oh, no. He was. Not only that, he had a Fool's Count Anywhere match with a guy. Fucking Sabu could barely walk. Um, (laughs) And uh, during the match... Amongst, he, he performed an Arabian fa- face buster from the top of the building, through the concrete parking lot into the middle of the earth, where they both burned to death. Well, I at one point, Sabu and whoever the fuck he was wrestling went through the crowd, and I lost track of where they were. So, I'm like, oh my lord! All of a sudden, I just hear this voice behind me go, "Fucking move!" And there's Sabu with a goddamn chair, and he fucking shoved me. It's like, okay, when Sabu tells you to move... You fucking move. move. <laughs> Not just move. Fucking he said, move. fucking move. That's right. So, yeah. That was a thing. There you go. D- Dane has had some weird stories on this show. He's been told to shut up by a band by a member of the band America, and was told to fucking move by Sabu. <laughs> um, and Brian Christopher also fell off. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I've told that story. Please. Okay, so at another indie show Brian Christopher was involved in a tag match and um, it was just a standard fucking wrestling match you know two people uh, rather it was three local guys and Brian Christopher and they The action spilled out of the ring. And one of the heels drop kicked Brian Christopher and he starts stumbling backwards. And there was no guardrail. And my chair was in the front row. And I'm like, oh, I I think he's going to fall. Oh, 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 oh. I fucking have one half of two pool on top of me. (laughs) Did you you actually say that? (laughs) Oop, 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 oop. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I was I was a robot that was malfunctioning. <laughs> boop boop beep boop. Brian Christopher error error. <laughs> error error. Oh lord. Oh, man, I've had so many wacky things happen to me. I could write a book. You should. Yeah, maybe. Like, no joke, you actually, I think you should. Yeah, yeah. I hope I hope this boss fight ends soon, because we are rapidly running out of time. Yeah. Uh, well, according to my timer, we have about about five-ish minutes left in the episode. I think I gotta destroy these cores around the, the edges of the of the arena. There's only one left, so I can't imagine the fight lasting too much longer. Yeah, here we go. Mm-hmm. What what is this thing anyway? Have we established what the uh, hell? You're it's gonna be dead in about two minutes. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it's not going to matter when its brains are strewn across the arena. Invulnerability Hunter, that's what it's called. Okay. According to the achievement I just got for beating it. Well, See, there you go. See you later. <laughs> you just bye got, bye he's got Thanos. Just going <laughs> to save that. All right, Did there we go. Did we start? I don't feel good. 
Thank you for joining us for this edition of Backseat Gamer. If you like what we do, please hit subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to be notified of upcoming videos. For Dane Ford Joan, I'm Mike Riley saying see you next time.